Listen, son. You think you're gonna play a stupid video game about cars and you're gonna become a race car driver? All I ever wanted to do is be a racer. I'm doing it. Hello and welcome to this, the latest edition of the Screen One interview. And today I have the honour of being joined by Richard Cambridge, who stars as Felix in the brand new film Gran Turismo, which is out very shortly on August the 11th. So welcome, Richard. Thank you for joining us today. How, how is things? Thanks for having me. Yeah, really nice to be here. Thanks very much. Really excited about the release coming up. Yes, uh, Gran Turismo is out August 11th in the UK and around the world, actually. Really, really exciting. Yeah, so that's in the next few days. So do you want to start telling us about the film and obviously your character, Felix, and who he is and what he does? So lots of people might have heard about Gran Turismo from the game. This is a PlayStation partnership with Sony, but this is a movie. This is in theatres. This is a real life. We shot it for real all around the world. Uh, story about a real life racing driver from Wales who became one of the, was one of the best Gran Turismo simulator drivers in the entire world. He went through um, a, a, a plan with Nissan and he became a real racing driver. This is the true story of that. And uh, it's been adapted for the theater. And we shot this um, a, a, as a movie, all real life with real cars. And uh, it's, it, it's now a movie that you can enjoy with a, a, a true story, which is, fantastic along with some of the most amazing cars you've ever seen in your life god it's like a little boy's dream to be part of this it was it was fantastic so your character is called felix and he's part of the pit crew is that right yeah so i am part of the crew with david harbour and orlando bloom um so archie is the main character archie plays uh, so jan is the main character jan mardenborough he is a a young kiddie really that gets thrown into this world of real racing. He knows the tracks, he knows how to drive. He's he's one of the best sim drivers in the world. And it's so realistic. This is what kind of the story really, the, the, mm. the, the, the sim is so realistic that he's driven the, the same tracks a thousand times. So he's driven so well, so fast in a simulator that that will transfer to the real world. So he's he's put in a 200 mile an hour racing car with uh, David Harbour as the team leader and I'm one of his crew and we we put him through his paces and I mean we're not we're not happy about it to start off with you know it's you can't put a kid in a 200 mile an hour race car it's too dangerous that's where but I come did. in and it kind of works out without revealing they did. too much <laughs> yeah <laughs> they did he becomes a real racing driver in real life yeah and and we yeah we we, we show that journey and and it it was it was fantastic to show because this isn't a CG film. This isn't something that's made on PlayStation and then like the graphics are put on. This is real racing. You know, the actors were really in those cars going two and a mile an hour. And I'm part of the pit crew changing tires at three seconds, which I can do for real. Yeah, you actually trained to do pit crew and change tires. It was that was that your choice or was that the director saying to you, can you learn this or did you just fancy it? I know I just fancied it. Yeah, I just rocked up on set, and <laughs> it's part of part of the role, you know. That that's yeah. what I took on, and I I hope I did it well. That they let me change the tires for real when they were going around the circuit. So we, um, yeah, it, it wasn't fake. Nothing in this movie is fake. They they drove that car, and it was going. They come down the lane, the pit lane at sixty mile an hour, which doesn't sound much compared with two hundred mile an hour. But they they come down the pit lane at sixty, so they're limited, and then they they stop. So imagine like two arms length, they're doing 60 mile an hour and then they stop. That's frightening for a start. Yeah. And then you've got about, with GT racing, you've got, a, you've got a window, I think it's a minute and a half or I can't remember the exact time, but there's a, there's a, a minimum time to change the tires. And on GT racing, which is part of the, there's, there's two guys change all the tires. And then on Le Mans racing, which is another type of car that's in a movie, there's two teams. So you, you change one side. So you change two sets of tires. Mm -hmm. um, we did that for real. And we got it down to about, two and a half, three seconds. And sometimes I was beating the real guys. When it's when it's two teams, one on this side, we, you sort of race your, you know, the other side to, to get to get those tires as quickly. Crazy. So, so you go out at 60 mile an hour, on the, yeah. you know, within two or three meters, they're doing 60, 60 mile an hour. It's it's frightening. So how did you learn that? I mean, it, was, it, was it quite a long process or was it literally, here's a gun, you just put it on there, just do that and go for it. But how, 
Yeah, it's a bit longer than that. There's a lot yeah, of things to worry about. Yeah, <laughs> it's harder than you imagine. I wish it was that easy in many ways, but no, I was really privileged to 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 be trusted with that really, and the safety on it was you know really really important because obviously you know it's it's dangerous and um, so yeah, I did a whole training boot camp with Silad, who's a real guy who did the training. He does GT cars for a living, and we watched videos of how to do it first of all, and then we stepped through with a a, a, a car and a and a gun not connected to anything, just going through to get the movements, mm-hmm. and the guns go. They go left and right, but because of the the way that the cars are, it's different on different sides. You've got to be really careful when you're on one side, on and off for the yeah. nut is one way. And when you're on the other way of the car, it's the other way around. So the wheels tighten as they go around. Yeah. You know, as they go around on the track, they don't spin off the wheel. So you've got to be really careful about that. And that's actually something that was really drilled into me, you know, because if you were to do that wrongly and a wheel was to come off in the pit lane when there's 500 people in the pit lane that could be someone's life so I mean it's not it's not it's not something to be sort of laughed at we really really were really careful about it and fortunately they trusted me to do that in real life and we did that and actually one of the really nice things about this film is Jan the real Jan stunt drove for himself oh okay so in the car you know sometimes the car would come to a stop and that would always be done. Those pit chains would always be done by a stunt driver. You know, they have to yeah. be because it's, it's health and safety, not by an actor. But we'd have a stunt driver do that. And Jan came along on one of the days to um, help out and see everyone. And they said, do you want to get in a car? And he ended up being the stunt driver for himself. So he's actually oh. playing himself <laughs> in the real film. Uh, and so, yeah, when I was changing the wheels with the cars, it says Jan on the side. It was actually him in the car, yeah, right? In the car. Yeah. yeah, that's mad. Yeah, so, um, so when the cameras were on, because you you actually did it for the film, you're actually doing it for real in the film. Car pulls in, you do it, done the tires. Was there additional pressure when the cameras were rolling? Because obviously you do it at a certain point, but did it add pressure? It does add pressure. Yeah. Do you know what? those guys that do it? It's generally is guys as opposed to girls that do it for real on Formula One. I can't imagine because the pressure when it comes in is that you're waiting, you're waiting for that moment. Then you've got two to three seconds and time kind of slows down when it comes in. Now I don't have the pressure of doing it for a formula one race when the whole career of everyone and your team is on the line. I was doing it, you know, for yeah. a film. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I could, it could have gone wrong. I, I, you know, it doesn't matter how long I take all these things, but the pressure is there. So I can only imagine what that, and, and I, hopefully that informs some of the character, some of that, you know, um, pressure and some of that energy and there really is an energy a racetrack when you're a real racetrack with real you know you've got hundreds of people around you and everyone is focused on that one thing it really does put into perspective the whole moment everyone's focused on the same thing and also it's difficult when you've got one of the biggest directors in the world watching you and two massive movie stars watching you and you know there's 500 people there watching and you're the only one doing stuff and you've got three seconds to change something or like a, 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 a window to change four tires that's quite stressful and it's also very hot one of the places that we were filming it was very hot and we were in the in these fire suits they're very hot which is fine when you're in austria and the red bull ring and it's snowing fine beautifully warm they're lovely and you're working really hard you get nice and cozy but when you're in dubai that's (laughs) hot (laughs) not so 40 degrees so that's over 100 for the people in america but it's uh, 40 degrees is hot and, mm. and I felt faint at one point, but that that was they were great about it. And it's 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 a tough job, but when it's you know it's only acting at the end of the day. Well, with <laughs> a little bit more method to it, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's acting nonetheless. So you you mentioned that Orlando Bloom and um, David Harbour were there. So did they learn any skills, or did or, or was you the only one in the team that really did? They learn a lot of skills. The whole world of racing is is fantastic. And, and you know, they're great actors. They're doing their jobs and they're doing it really well. And, do, do you know, the, the, the way the pit lane is set out, there's, there's certain protocols with what areas that you're allowed to be at certain times. And that was really worked well into the sort of safety of it as well. So that was that was important. The way that the, the set works and the characters interacted was really important. That became really part of the dance that the, the film um made but that yeah that's something that we sort of have to had to work out amongst ourselves has it given you a uh a, a bigger appreciation now you've mentioned that you know what they do but is it giving because it's open your eyes to it a bit more do you does it give you a bigger appreciation 
Yeah, I've been on a lot of film sets over the years, but actually this is the biggest thing that I've ever done. It's a real privilege to be part of it, to be doing a big movie like that. And there are there are differences, you know, but essentially it's it's really made me feel I, I've been I've been acting for a long time and it's making a small film, making a big film is essentially the same. You know, we're essentially trying to craft something that delivers to an audience uh, emotional journey. And actually it's the same on a multi-million pound big studio movie to something you're making with your iPhone yourself. It's not that far different. You're still creating a story for an audience. So that really, that made me really appreciate that actually. But obviously it's, it's nice to be part of a big film and, and what a privilege to be doing that with, with some of the best in the world. I mean, it's, yeah, amazing. So how did you come to be in Gran Turismo? I mean, obviously you have the audition process, but how did you circle into it? Was it, was there a lot of auditions involved or was it? Yeah, the, the the level I am, you always audition for films. You know, when mm. you're when you're um, a little bit higher up, you get offers for stuff, and and that's how they package films together. But I auditioned for this, and I actually I auditioned through this. Um, I I did my audition on this on a system called We Audition, which I mm. am part of as well, which I can talk about a bit later. Which is a a, a system that helps actors do self tapes. But I did a self tape for this in the UK. So this is a, an American movie, but it was it was not filmed in America. So a lot of the cast were European and British. And the Nissan team, which is the team where Jan was in, is, yep. is a Japanese team with a lot of British engineers. Right. British people tend to be uh, in motor racing quite appreciated for their engineering skills and things like that. So it turned out that a lot of British people were in that team, as well as mm -hmm. David Harbour. A lot of the engineers were cast as British people. So that was an opportunity you know, to cast in, in the UK and I was lucky enough to be chosen to play Felix. So that's, that's yeah, really nice. So yeah, I, I went through an audition process and that was a self-tape to start off with. That was a self-tape yeah. recorded in this very room, just here, yeah. recorded the self-tape right there and sent it off. And, and you do a lot of these things. You send, as an actor, you, you get projects in, you, you know, think, is this a good fit for me? They think, is it a good fit for you? And there's a discussion and then you do a, a scene you record a scene and send that off and then they come back with notes or ignore you or say, come and see us again. Mm. So have you seen the finished film yet? Or is there, have you got any kind of favourites or have you seen any of the sequences? Or I anything? haven't seen anything. No, I spoke to Archie actually last week and he said he's seen it. Um, oh. And he said it's awesome. It, it's, uh, no, it's out August 11th. That's probably the first time I say it. Actually, we have a newcomer this year. His presence is shaking the foundation of the sport. This is the major leagues. The other drivers, your pit crew are going to hate you. Much easier with a joystick, isn't it? <laughs> so moving on from there, you just touched on it. Can we, can we you created or you co-founded the, um, the We Audition app. So do you want to talk through that a bit? Because how it came about, when you came up with the idea and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it's a self-tape system. It's it's so let me backtrack. It's a community for actors. So mm -hmm. it's a, an online video chat system that enables actors to help each other and work with each other for their self-tapes for their auditions to get better. So we've got coaching on there and we've got interactions with some casting directors for, for opportunities, but we've also got reader on demand. So when someone gets an audition in, you get sent the script, so you're like, well, oh, great. And then you read your lines and then you need someone else to perform the other lines. So that person is called a reader. Yep. If you go to an audition in real life, the, the casting person would read the other lines. But when you do a self-tape at home, you get your flatmate, your mum, your friend to come over and read those. So don't do that if you're an actor ever. That's <laughs> bad for relationships. <laughs> what you do is you, get, you go online and you find someone to be a reader. So we audition is now the biggest in Hollywood for that. So reader on demand. So you hire people to be a reader for you over Zoom or self-chat, whatever, but we are a Zoom, so we're a, a video chat service with that yeah. community. So I have always been an actor, day job, and I've been doing like engineering, um, software development, that that has always been my day job. Actors always have day jobs. Going back to Gran Turismo, part, maybe that would make me a good fit for being an engineer on the movie. I mean, yeah. it's the same mindset, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's they saw something in there. I like that technical thing. So I, I built a very early version of We Audition eight years ago now with a friend in LA. Mm -hmm. We had originally three co-founders. We founded it just to help each other do self-tapes on a very early version of, it was sort of Skype, but a very early version of the web video chat. And we did it through our own version of Skype, which I built eight years ago. And then that's 
evolved and um, it's evolved into what we have now with, with an app and a website where people can meet up and connect with each other. And we have over 60,000 actors, all professional actors on the system, video chat with each other all day, every day. There'll be auditions on there now. There'll be people available now. And if I just log into it, there'll be people available, ready to read with you. And yeah. like, these are the people like there's, oh, wow. these people now are waiting if you want to be yeah. read with. So we have like 50 to 100 people usually online, ready, waiting. Mm -hmm. To read with you so it's and people use it as their job people do people do it um to read with other people and some people do it for free some people do it for training some people do it for a little bit of money for tips and some people charge a fee like coaches and other people say that they can get paid five ten twenty dollars for half an hour for a quarter of an hour and they make that money as their as their living so it's it's been really successful and as i said i did my audition my initial audition yeah audition for gran turismo on we audition and it was with a chap called Pete Luna. And I will always remember that. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> Pete That's Luna. Brilliant. He was in he was in New York. I mean, I was in the middle of the night here. I did the audition. I, I did the audition middle of the night. Uh, it was like really late. I wouldn't have got a friend over. You know, couldn't have got my wife or my flatmate to do that or whatever, you know. Yeah. That that would have been difficult. So to do it with someone in New York, they're up. Fine. No yeah, help. Perfect. So did you ever envisage it becoming this big as it has um, and sort of becoming an industry standard almost? Uh, I, n I hoped, you always hope, yeah. you know, a bit like Gran Turismo, you hope you do a big studio movie. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the lap of the gods, so to speak, so what happens? And I am very lucky with that. It's, it's worked out really well, but, you know, I work really hard on it. That's what I do every day when I'm not. If you're an actor, you tend to have a, day, a side job. You tend to have a day job, they say, you know, don't ditch the day job. That's what they yeah. sort of say. So that's always the last eight years or so. Probably the last three years I've been doing it full time since pandemic, really. I, I started yeah. doing that full time then and have not stopped doing that full time apart from when I'm on set filming with um, movies. So I don't do anything else. And that has been absolutely fantastic. But one of the best things has been the feedback. You know, we help people all the time book mm. huge, huge roles on network TV and movies. And that's something I'm really proud of because we help people do better tapes and we help them up their game. Yeah. And if you're an actor, it's really difficult to get opportunity and to get the opportunity to do your best work. And so hopefully we help people do that. So that's available across all so, um, iOS and Google and all that. Yeah. But so it's a website it's online. Cool. Most people use their laptop because it's a bigger screen or their desktop yeah. with their webcam. That works really well. But it's also available on iOS uh, for your iPhone and the iPad version is very popular as well because it's got a nice big screen. Yeah. Oh, we have a, a brilliant little feature as well. Hollywood tip for you. We've got a scrolling feature. When you get sent your scripts, you can upload them to our system and it's it recognizes your voice and it scrolls with you. Wow. So you can have your phone up recording you, but it's yeah. actually cheeky cheeky lines. They're right in front of it because it's following what you say. Little it's Hollywood like an auto prompt for you. Not wow. advised, but it is there if you need it. It's like a safety net, you know, in the <laughs> In the circus, the guys up there on the high wire, they don't need the safety net, but it is still there. Just in case. Yeah, well, I will put the links down the bottom here. So any um, actors or anybody who's not on it yet, um, it sounds like there can't be that many, but um, those who aren't, you can hit the links and do that. So um, getting back, well, we'll drop back into Gran Turismo. So have you maintained the skills that you learned on set? I mean, are you like changing your neighbor's tires in three seconds, you know, just nipping out and... Whoop? <laughs> do you know what I, do, I would love that wouldn't it they yeah. use special kit those those guns are really dangerous i would oh, not really? i don't think i don't think that's a domestic thing no. that could be around they're, they're de and also they have one nut so on a on a gt car or on a formula one car yeah. so one nut has the whole bolt so that the wheel has sort of spikes on it so it can be put anywhere around on a domestic tire you have to get it yeah you have ever changed the tire have you ever changed the tire yeah, yeah. well i do it. yeah He's got to get on the. You yeah, get it's it. a pain. Yeah, it's a pain. So they don't have that. It can go on any way round because it's got like spikes that fit the spikes on the other way, and then one nut. So it is very, very different setup. But those nuts, they're quite difficult to get on. And the, the skill is, you, you put the, you take the nut off, and it sticks to the gun. Yeah. The skill is to put it back on. But the same nut goes on the second wheel, so that the nut comes off. So the skill is not to drop that. 
So it's not like uh, you hear these stories of actors taking things off the set. You didn't just borrow a complete set of the compression gun and, and the nuts and tires and so you didn't do that then. No, and they wouldn't let me do that. You know, I tried, but you know, they no. Nah. I don't know what I'd do with it, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He didn't try and sneak a car off set either and go for a spin. Those cars are amazing. There's two types yeah. of cars. You can see them in the trailers. Check them out now. You can see it before you see the film. There's the um the Nissan GT cars. They are they are so famous for being their fast road car. They are quick as, and they are four wheel drive, super fast. They stick to the road like glue. They are quick, quicker than they should be for a road car, the Nismos. They are, I mean, rightly so in the hall of fame of some of the best cars in the world for sort of hot hatch and, and, and road cars that race. And then also you can see in the trailers, there's the LMP cars, which are the Le Mans prototype cars. Now these are aero cars. They've got like wings that go over like this, a big wing on the back and a low front. They're one seater. They're very, very fast. They're the, they're the sort of fast before Formula One. It's what they, what they race at Le Mans. So if you Edmunds have a Skeletrix with Le Mans and things like that, those are the style of cars. They're, um, you need a special license to drive them. They are very fast and you have to drive them fast because they stick to the road with like, like Formula One cars. They have to yeah. be driven fast because they have the grip from their speed. So that's the class of, there's LMP2 and LMP1. Well, we were driving those um, in, uh, in Gran Turismo and, and that's, yeah, they're, they're very they're very special cars, and you know, the artwork and the set design was astonishing. They're they're real cars. They're yeah. Amazing. So did you get to go out in the cars around the tracks? Did you have drivers go with you, or did you get? To I get went around with Mark. So Mark yeah. um, was one of the stunt drivers. He drove for Bond. He's done all the Bond stuff. They did Fast and Furious as well. Some of the best team in the world doing that. So he took me around one of the tracks very fast. How was that? Very fast. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know. I want to do it again. We went around sideways yeah. most of the way. It was fun. I think he was just having fun. <laughs> yeah, trying to just trying to look like it. Yeah, trying to so put, well. put it sideways. But the smell as well. You know, yeah. you can't really put that into a movie. The smell and the noise is phenomenal. And you can't put. I think the sound design on Gran Turismo will be really important. I'm really looking forward to seeing that because you know the visuals is one thing, but also in the cinema. Go see this in the cinema as well because yeah. like. Maverick, that won an Oscar and a BAFTA for best sound and yeah. echoes around you. And I think that was one of the best experiences of watching that. And I think this will be really similar. Go and see it in the cinema because the it was shot for the cinema, it was shot for IMAX and for premium cinemas. The world will be around you and that feeling and those vibrations is something that's very difficult to get across in a home cinema or certainly not on a small screen. Yeah, I, I hope that will really come across in the movie. And Neil's a fantastic director and I'm sure it will. So, so sort of finally, what, what are we going to see you next in? I mean, obviously, we've got Gran Turismo in the next few days, um, which we're all very excited about. Um, so where are we going to see you next? Because we need to see you again soon in something. I don't sure. know. I hope, I hope so. Um, I don't know. I'm still available. <laughs> yeah, I'll be doing some other stuff. I really love it. I love being on set. I love working. I love being part of this world. It's been a privilege to do it. We did it 20 years, and I, it continues to amaze me. I don't know. I hope I do some more stuff. Um, have you not got any current see. projects work you're working on or, or you... I, audition, I audition a lot um, and uh, just got new management in LA which is really nice so hopefully something will come up and hopefully that Gran Turismo will give uh, people another view of you doing something else I hope so as well yeah I hope you really enjoy it if you go and see it I hope please do go and see it uh, yeah make sure you go and see it yeah. Yeah. make sure you go and see it yeah. it's in the theatres yeah August 11th but genuinely I think it's a a fantastic concept it's got heart as well as being about amazing cars it's not just about the game but uh I, yeah it's, it's got it's got something to see for everyone and uh amazing cars and amazing spectacle well there you have it that is summed up there by uh, mr richard cambridge there um gran turismo which is out in the next few days on august the 11th make sure you go to the cinema try and see it on the biggest screen possible um and do enjoy it anyway Thank you very much for your time, Richard. That's all for now. And uh, we will see you all on the very next Screen One interview soon. Goodbye. Thanks, Matt. Bye. If I lose, I lose more than just a race. So I'm not going to quit. You've got to prove to everyone that you belong. You've raced it, what, like a thousand times? 
Now you just gotta do it in real life. Gran Turismo, based on a true story. But I won't stop now.